Okay, everybody, this is Moody Dashcam. Today, we're on Rockaway Beach. We're gonna be talking about the first official Roy DeMeo crew Gemini Method murder, where they cut the bodies up and dispose of them that way. The guy was killed in the meat section of a supermarket, which we'll be heading to, of course, in this video. So let's flip this around and get into it. All right, the address that we're heading to is 27-15 Rockaway Beach Boulevard in Rockaway Beach, Queens. I forgot to mention that we were in Queens before, but that's where we are. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, at Mooney-Cam. I post on there pretty much every day. All the crime scene photos that cannot go on YouTube, go on the Instagram, so check that out. Please don't forget to leave suggestions for future videos in the comments. I very much appreciate that. Also, Hit the notification bell so you guys know exactly when I post a new video. Oh, enough of that. This incident happened June 13th, 1975. The victim, his name is Andre Katz. At the time, he was 23 years old. Now, this is a pretty crazy story. Obviously, I'm going to give you all the details of it. And this is uh, Rockaway Beach. I don't do a lot of videos around here. Um... But it's an interesting area. It doesn't look like any other part of Queens, really. So, to get into the victim a little bit. Andre Katz was a fairly normal person, besides a few little things. He lived in Flatbush at 1823 East 13th Street. He worked with his father at a car shop called Very Best Foreign Car Service at 1329 Utica Avenue in Flatlands, Brooklyn. He had a seemingly normal life, but then through one of his customers, he got involved with Chris Rosenberg, who we know as one of the members of Roy DeMeo's crew, but at the time, Roy DeMeo's crew wasn't really a known thing like it is today. Andre Katz had no police record, so Chris offered to sell Andre stolen car parts from Chris's shop, because the Roy DeMeo crew dealt with stolen cars, as you may or may not know. So they start dealing with each other with the stolen parts, and their relationship develops into actually hanging out. He hangs out with Chris, Joseph Testa, Anthony Center, just all his friends shooting the shit together. It turns into Andre buying cocaine from Chris to resell it on his own. And then in August of 1974, Andre buys a 38 revolver from Chris. At around the same time, they all get involved in a stolen van deal. Andre sets up one of his friends with the stolen van, sells him the van. The friend, soon after, gets pulled over by police. Now, I don't know if Andre... This guy's serious here. I don't know if Andre told him the van was stolen when he bought it, when he gave it to him. But, either way, Andre gets pulled over. Sorry, the friend, Andre's friend, gets pulled over. And the cops tell him the van is stolen. He points the finger right to Andre. I assume he did think it was a regular van and not stolen. So Andre gets picked up pretty quickly after that, gets arrested. And even though he's being pressured by the auto crime unit, he did not cooperate. And he makes bail and gets out of jail. Andre is now pissed off at Chris because his uh, shoddy work replacing the VIN numbers, making fake VIN numbers on these vans. Shortly after Andre gets out of jail, Chris... Joe Testa and his brother, Patrick Testa, show up at Andre's job, threatening him so he stays quiet. Okay, we're pulling into what is now a key food, but what was back then a Pride Pantry supermarket. So in the meat section of this supermarket is where this went down. I'm going to pull over and we'll talk all about it. So 
So as they're threatening him to keep quiet about going to jail, which he's probably pissed off about because he already did keep quiet, he gets into an argument with Chris, which he's really the closest with. Say hi to the truck and don't forget it. That's the key food. We're gonna walk up and down the shopping center a little bit here. So the next day, Chris and Andre argue again, which actually results in Andre getting punched in the mouth by Chris. Whoa, look at this character right here on his bike. There we go. Like I said, Rockaway is an interesting place. Two days after Andre gets punched in the mouth by Chris, he gets pulled out of his car, Andre, and beaten so badly by two masked men that he could not form coherent sentences for about three days. He had to go to the hospital. That's how badly he was beaten. Andre tells his brother, Victor, what's going on, and he says that it was Joseph Tessa and Anthony Center, which at the time they didn't have this name, but now they are known as the Gemini Twins. So after leaving the hospital, he's scared to leave the house much. Besides, waiting outside of Chris's house with an automatic rifle, and right when he steps outside, I think he was leaving from his garage. He shoots him multiple times. One bullet actually hitting him in the jaw, leaving him like slightly disfigured from it. Now, this is meant as no offense to the Rockaways, but how I explain the Rockaways to people that don't know it, aren't familiar, I explain it as a place that looks like it was abandoned 10 years ago, but people still live here. If I drove around a little more, you might get the vibe. You might get it from this video also. So now the crew meets with Roy DeMeo. They try and figure out how to handle this whole situation with Andre because he does not go anywhere without his brother now. Chinese food place behind a bulletproof glass. That's how that works out here. He doesn't go anywhere without his brother because he's, he's scared. He's scared he's gonna have the same situation happen when he got jumped by the two guys, two masked guys, the Gemini twins. So in talking about how to figure out what to do with him, Henry Borelli, brings up, we should use a girl to lure him into a trap. He finds a girl, she agrees to do it, shortly after she backs out of doing it. Then in January, 1975, Andre goes to the district attorney to inform on Chris stealing cars. It immediately gets back to Roy because Roy has an auto crime cop on payroll. So it gets right back to him. So now everything is kicked into motion at this point. In May, Andre appeared in front of a grand jury and pretty much spilled the beans on the DeMeo crew dealings. So, this had to go down. June 13th, 1975, they get the woman to agree again to lure him to where they need to lure him. His apartment for apparently a date in Manhattan. The plan was to meet on 37th between Park and Madison Avenue. So obviously this place isn't the same as it was, but this is the supermarket and in the meat department is where this happened. I'd love to go in here into the meat department, but I don't really feel like doing that to everyone in there. So he shows up for this date. He
he's forced into a car right away and they drive over to here where he stabbed 21 times seven times in the chest to hit his heart 14 times in the back and then he's dismembered with saws typical gemini crew they had they later um spruced up their method trimmed the fat so to say the people doing the dismembering was probably roy and joseph tessa because they had some butchering experience so that we presume that's how that went down they took off his head and they crushed it in a cardboard compactor his body parts were wrapped in plastic and taken to the garbage behind the supermarket days later a person was walking their dog at holland avenue and beach 90th street which is this right here so this corner which is behind the back of this supermarket and sees a leg a, a cut off leg past the curb on a piece of grass so obviously they call the police the police search around finding body parts cut into about a dozen pieces in 10 separate bags and put all throughout the dumpster and portable garbage cans. So this quite possibly is exactly where Andre Katz's body was um, disposed of. Oh, and look, there's a bunch of a uh, compacted cardboard oh look right there is the cardboard compactor that big brown I believe that's a cardboard compactor and if it isn't someone will definitely correct me in the comments I can assure you of that oh by the way don't worry I did lock the truck and turned it off I'm not that crazy. I know I'm out here for a while. Oh, you know what I didn't do yet in this video? Show you guys my outfit. Come on. Up and down. Head to toe. There's another pair of shoes. I have now showed you guys more shoes in these videos than most people own in their lives. That's a me problem. Don't worry about it. All right, we're going to speed this up. We're going to do a speedy walk back to the truck. I won't be speeding up, but you guys will. So two days after the discovery of Andre Katz's body, he was identified by dental records. And then about a year after all this went down, the woman that was involved, that Lord, I keep wanting to say Andrew, Andre Katz, who lured him to the apartment building to ultimately get him killed, cooperated. She was actually on vacation, heard this was going down, 
stayed on vacation longer, came back and immediately cooperated because she didn't know she was involved and she didn't know she was setting someone up to get murdered. So then um, Henry Borelli and Joseph Testa both get arrested. They go to trial and they just slander her character, how she's on antidepressant medication, anti-anxiety medication, how there's no physical evidence. They get acquitted of the murders. Nothing really comes of it after that. That's a year after the incident. Until between 1984 and 1988, the remaining alive members of the Gameo crew that were involved at this time uh, were sentenced to life in prison. So they all got there. Um, if they didn't get murdered, they're spending the rest of their life in jail. That's what I ended up happening. Crazy story about a kid, really a kid, a 23 year old, getting stabbed 21 times in the meat department of a supermarket. How they had that connection, I don't exactly know. I'm sure some of you know and will tell me. Either way, crazy story. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you didn't, 